Good afternoon and thank you all for joining me. Welcome to another creative episode. This is part two of how to use a palette knife and how to paint with a palette knife. In part one of the episode, I took you through some of the most important points to keep in mind when using a palette knife and most importantly, the importance of discovering and finding your own technique and how you like to paint. I'll enclose the link in the bio if you haven't seen that and feel free to go to that first before you watch the full demonstration in this video. The one point that I wanted to emphasize with everybody here today is just how important it is to be yourself and to find your own technique, to really dive into discovering how you like to paint. Painting with a palette knife is no different to when you are using a brush. You still have to keep in mind all the technical components of painting. The difference that I have found with the paint palette knife is that the palette knife is very immediate and also it puts paint on quite thick. So you have to be mindful um, in how you use it in terms of thick and thin, otherwise you get in trouble fairly quickly. But the point of knowing yourself and knowing what you like to paint and how you like to paint in particular, your own personal signature technique is very important. And let me give you a quick explanation. Because when you paint from your own unique signature, you get to a place that's called the zone. And you've heard about the zone when you paint in the zone, from the zone, the real importance of this is that you tap into your natural self and that's really really important and when you are in that place you contribute to your artwork from a much higher level and that's why when you see some of the artworks that that are just magnificent and you feel that particular artwork know that one of the reasons is because that artist was painting with their unique signature and from within their own zone and therefore they're expressing themselves fully unencumbered authentically and with a lot of vulnerability um, that's a point that ken robinson has talked about in his books endless and if you're not familiar with his works, please go um, and read a couple of his works. They're absolutely amazing. In this video, I'm going to take you with this painting from beginning to the end of how to paint with a palette knife. And I will narrate through it so you have the whole painting from beginning to end. Please take note in some of the techniques that I'm using and maybe perhaps incorporate them in your studio when you get a moment. Thank you all for always tuning in. Please do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and a like, it will help me tremendously. And if you have any questions going forward, don't hesitate to comment in below and I'll do my best to get back to everybody. In the meantime, enjoy and remember that while you are in the world, you are the light of the world. Do not let anybody else tell you otherwise. Keep creating, keep expanding and amplifying more of yourself. Enjoy the video. Until next time, guys. Bye. This is a still life demonstration, porcelain dish and pink blossoms. I chose this subject for its simplistic factor so that everyone, no matter your painting level, can follow along. I'm starting with blocking in the darkest tone of the porcelain dish. I'm using a brush to add thin layers of color and to establish the values this will act as a baseline from where I will start to use the palette knife. Keep in mind that when painting a white object, the value of white is never pure white, rather a mixture of greys made up of blues, yellows and reds.
Remember to maintain the integrity of your subject. In this case, this porcelain dish isn't totally round and has dips and troughs, which means the values change. Notice how my palette knife moves in that figure eight motion, and I'm continually correcting and refining, uniting the relationships between each value. Adjusting each shape, value and edge is very easy when working wet into wet and when painting with a palette knife. It might not come across in the video, but there is a semi-moderate amount of paint, which means I can manipulate and sculpt the shapes with greater ease. Keep in mind that this is the middle ground of the subject, as I'm yet to add the blue pattern decorations, which is the foreground of the subject. At this stage, doubt can creep in. Are my values correct? Remember to commit to building your confidence and adding paint in spite of your doubt testing you. Trust yourself. You know your own strengths. Continue building each layer. The aim is to give the feeling of the porcelain, thus by varying the, the values, you give it life. Here I'm slowly beginning to build the highlights and making sure not to destroy the essence of the light. Pay close attention to those shapes and edges and try not to lose the darkest values that you've established within your subject. I'm adding small units of color within each shape so that I don't lose those values that I have already placed prior. When painting a white subject, this will tax your mind as the color values are so close together. By continuing to refine your values, warm, cool tones, etc., you will eventually be able to correlate values without consciously thinking about each step. So now at this stage, I'm adding the pattern of the porcelain. I've gone back to using a brush, simply utilizing it as a drawing tool. Once I have the drawing, I go back to using the palette knife in order to add texture and movement.
Now I'm starting on the spring blossoms. Again, the same process repeats. I'm adding the darkest tones with a brush in order to establish the darkest values. And I also like to keep some areas thinner before I begin working with the palette knife. Thick paint looks daring and confident, thus I like some areas to feel relaxed and sometimes opaque. When you paint flowers, directing your mood to see only shapes will help you greatly during the painting process. Each shape joins or collides with another. This is an opportunity to soften an edge and correct its value. Create variety in each flower via simple curve, irregular shape, contour and or emphasizing a line. When painting flowers, you now have the freedom to truly showcase your authenticity and movement. Notice that I'm correcting this shape by re-establishing my darks. Again, this is the benefit of working wet into wet. You can correct mistakes and continue to establish the color relationships and harmony of each movement that you make. Continue to observe and evaluate every stroke that you make. Sometimes the right colour isn't the exact colour necessary for your subject and while I lock into a colour coordinate, I mostly paint what I feel. From here on, I'll speed up the rest of the painting so that you can see the final product. I trust that this has given you a small insight into the palette knife. Find your balance between the brush and the palette knife. Don't let the disappointment bring you down. Trust yourself. Have courage in your own technique, your own personal signature, and keep igniting your own creative genius.